Okay, so um, five-step factoring, it might take some of us a few tries at this to understand it. Uh, at the beginning here, again, I give it to you algebraically, and sometimes that's confusing for people. So uh, if this is too complicated, just make sure that you're really paying attention to what's going on once we get to the numbers. So again, this is what we had to do in 9.5 when we factored. We took um, the factors of, or the multiples of C, we would call them term 1 and term 2, and we would use those same ter two terms, and they would have to add up to B also. And then in our answer, it would just simply be X plus term 1 and X plus term 2. Um, the five-step process is going to be similar, but we have to add extra steps because in the five-step process, you'll notice here up at the top of the notes, if I can draw your attention to that, that it's no longer just X squared, it's AX squared and then bx plus c is the same. So the key thing here, again, and it says it right here, there's no number in front of x squared, so our leading coefficient in, in the five-step process is no longer one. Um, and when, you're, when your leading coefficient is one, you can go back to doing the two-step method. So again, on this first page, um, as best I can, I'm going to do this with, um, with algebraic terms, but we're going to take a times c, to get a new term and we're going to call it D and um, again that's actually what's written out here in parentheses but we're going to multiply up our leading coefficient in our last term and then what we're going to do is we're going to use instead of C here this used to be what C um, was we're going to multiply up to this new number D right here so we're still going to take two terms term one and term two term one and term two, these are going to be those multiples that we find that add up to this middle term. The only difference is now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put them into step three here, which step three looks a little bit different. AX squared is going to be exactly the same AX squared from the formula, and C is going to be exactly the same C from the formula up top. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take those two terms and we're going to plug them into here. And as you can see in step four, it says to factor out the greatest common factor from each set of parentheses, and then we're going to factor by grouping. Um, again, it's kind of hard to see algebraically, so we're just going to move on into an actual practice problem where you can see how this unfolds with numbers. So I left us plenty of room here in the notes, um, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and zoom in here. Uh, first step, again, is to take A times C, so we're going to take A times C and that would be 2 times 3. So step 1 is to take a times c, 2 times 3, and that will give us our answer 6. Now what we're going to do for step 2 is it's the multiples, so blank times blank equals that new value 6 instead of 3, and then we're still going to add up to our middle term, and that's negative 7. So again, this part of the problem is essentially the same. We have to find the multiples of 6 that add up to negative 7. That would give us negative 1 and negative 6. Step 3 is where it becomes a little bit different. Again, we are going to copy down the first term exactly how it looks. So the first term was 2x squared. Then what we were going to do is going to pick one of these two terms. We can pick the negative 1 or the 6. I'll go ahead and just drop the negative 1 straight down. And when we do it in the five-step process, they get x's with them, and we put them in parentheses. Then we put plus. Then our other term is negative 6. It gets an x with it also. And then the last term is positive 3. Now, if you look at what we have here, if I were to combine these two terms in the middle, the 6x, the negative 6x, and the negative 1x, all I've really done right there is broken apart this middle term right here. So if I were to combine those, just understand that we do still have the same equation. Now what we're going to do is we're going to factor. The goal is to try and get two of the same exact thing when we factor those. So in step four, when we factor, here's what it's going to look like. I'm going to take out an x because that's all I can take out. When I take out an x, what is left is 2x minus 1. Now what I want to do in this other set of parentheses is I want to be able to, I want to factor something out, but I want all of this inside the parentheses to look the same. Now, if I were to factor out a 3, that wouldn't work for me, because if I factor out a positive 3, it would give me negative 2x plus 1. 
So what I'm going to do instead is factor out a negative 3. When I do that, that changes this first term to a positive 2x and my second term to a minus 1. So when we look at this, it says for step 5 to factor again. If you look at this, everything is hooked by multiplication right here. All of this is hooked by multiplication, and all of this is hooked by multiplication. So both of these two things share a factor of 2x minus 1. If I factor 2x minus 1 off of both of these things, all I'm left with is the x and the negative 3. And that would be how you factor this, this five-step method. So again, um, if you need to re-watch that video, kind of listen to what I'm saying, and, and pay attention to the steps. But again, understand that when we take our multiples in step three, that's really about the hardest part. When we take these multiples down from step two to step three, remember that they get an x with them. And then after that, that you factor off what they share. That's this 2x plus one, or 2x minus one, and this 2x minus one. And then the other two terms just come from what they share. So that was, um, that was the x and the negative three. Okay, so that was this. Um, if you need to, go over it again, like I said, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next one. So if you want, pause it so that you can work it out first. If not, I'm just going to go ahead and get started with it. I'll talk through this one as well. But make sure, again, it's not going to do you any good to just watch me do these over and over again. So make sure that you're actually trying these. Okay, so again, step one, we need to take A times C. So that's 3 times negative 5 and that gives us negative 15. For step two, we're gonna use that value blank times blank is equal to negative 15. Blank plus blank is equal to positive 14. So I want the multiples that will work for me in that, and that would give me, let's see, 15, and negative one will do that for me. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these into step three Again, step three, we just copy down the first term, 3x squared, and then it doesn't matter which multiple, I'll go ahead and put the positive 15 first. Again, it gets an x with it. We're going to put those two things in parentheses. I put a plus sign in the middle. My first term um, with the other one was negative 1x, and then I copy down my last term, minus 5. Step four, we are going to factor. So we're going to factor something out of these parentheses, anything that we can. I can factor a 3 and an x out. When I do that, I'm left with x plus 5. If you look at this one, this one's kind of tricky, but if I look at this, I can make this x plus 5 just by factoring a negative 1 out. So if I factor a negative 1 out, I end up with x plus 5. Again, the common factor they share for step 5 is x plus plus 5, and then what's left is 3x minus 1. Again, remember that when we go to step 3, you could have put the negative 1 where the 15 is and the 15 where the negative 1 is, but as long as you factor, you'll get the same answer. You can go ahead and try that if you want, but again, it, it doesn't really matter what you put where. It just matters that you're putting um, and factoring them correctly. I'll go ahead and move on to the next page. So again, especially if you haven't tried one yet, let's say that you just watched through two, um, you really should do this one on your own before I do it because there's no negative signs. If you just do the steps straight forward, you should be able to get this one. So make sure that you have that going. Um, step one again is we take A times C. So we say three times four, and we get our new term for the letter D, and that's 12. And then for step two, we're gonna say what number times what number is equal to 12, or our term for D. And then we have what number plus what number is equal to B still. We look at this and we can see that it's 6 and 2. We're going to take that 6 and 2 into step 3. Again, step 3, we're going to copy the first term down. My first term was 3x squared. Then I'm going to put my 6x put those in parentheses, put a plus sign every time. Regardless of whether or not that next term is positive or negative, we're going to put a plus in the middle. Then 2 also gets an x, and then plus 4. 
We put the second set in parentheses also. Now we're to step four where we can factor, um, and this is factors by groups. So what we can pull out of the first group is a three and an x. What's left is x plus two. What we can pull out of the second group is a positive two. What's left is x plus two. Then we factor off of both what they share. They both share a factor of x plus two, so I'm gonna write it first, x plus two. And then I write what's left, three x plus two. And that is your answer. It is completely factored. There's nothing else that those two terms share. Again, if you're unsure at the end what your answer is, everyone should know how to FOIL. So if you FOIL this back out, you should get what we started with up at the very top. Again, I'll, we've got one more in the notes here. I'll go ahead and go through it. Make sure that you guys are trying this on your own. This one will be a little tricky because there's a negative, but we should still know how to do it. So again, step one, we take negative four times seven, and we get our new value for our term D as 28. Then in step two, we say blank times blank is equal to negative 28. Blank plus blank is equal to 12. So I need the factors of negative 28 that add up to 12. That's going to be 14 and negative 2. Again, we're going to drop those two factors down into step 3. So we're going to say negative 4x squared, because that's my first term, plus 14x. You know what? Scratch that. Let's do this a little different just so I can show you that it works both ways. <clears throat> Instead of plus 14x, let's put that negative 2x in there you'll get the same answer either way. So let's say I put the negative two first, and we're gonna put those in parentheses. Then what I wanna do is I wanna put plus 14x plus seven. Okay, so again, um, this is gonna kinda of dictate what we get for our second part when we factor. Let's, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, let's factor a negative two out. When we factor a negative two out with the x, that's going to make our terms in there positive instead of negative. So it's going to be 2x plus 1. Then what I can factor out of the other set is a positive 2, or excuse me, a positive 7. And I'm going to get 2x plus 1. Then step 5, we're almost done. Step 5, we factor once more. What they share, 2x plus 1. And then what's left is negative 2x plus 7. And now that is completely factored. Again, make sure that you email me if you have questions. Um, this video hopefully helps a little bit. But that's all we have for the notes, and um, good luck on the homework.